Hi, this is Atsuja16 for the Gear Game channel. And uh, this is another presentation of uh, the upcoming Metaphor Assault Squad, which is the standalone expansion of Metaphor. This is actually showing a 4v4 game, which turned out to be a 3v4 game, because uh, one of the players had to leave uh, for something called uh, social life. It's also a defeat, but a very cool defeat and very intense defeat because uh, the other players uh, and the other team were actually very good and experienced. So that made it very intense and uh, I think it really does show uh, Metaphor Assault Squad at its best. The kind of gameplay you see in this video is actually much different than the one you will see from the original Metaphor. And that really does show how different is this game compared to the original. In the original, for example, you will see a few infantrymen uh, scattered around to scout the enemy and tank dominating the battlefield. But in this video, you will actually see infantry fights uh, against each other, but also fighting against tank and pushing each other. So the front is really advancing and withdrawing a lot and it's really intense. You will also notice how important it is to use your infantry tactically to suppress your enemy in advance. You will also notice how uh, now it's actually useful to keep your infantry in a squad and make them advance slowly together instead of just spreading them around and let the vehicle do all the job. But now let's get back to the video itself. As you may notice already uh, so far, I'm uh, actually using my infantry to cover each other and I move them uh, individually to uh, ensure that one of them attract enemy fire to uh, make uh, the enemy stand out from their cover while uh, the other one are suppressing the enemy and killing them. Now of course there's uh, this enemy which brought uh, uh, an MG vehicle which was really painful for me and it actually killed a, li a lot of my troop and uh, pretty much destroyed the whole building that I was expecting to use as cover. But I guess that demonstrates uh, how destructible is the environment of this game. You can literally flatten all the battlefield and sometimes it really does end up like that. Especially when you bring artillery, it's really destructive. And in this case, the enemy is actually using a good strategy, moving uh, his vehicle and destroying my troop like that because it allows him to uh, push me back. Also, I will uh, point to the fact that he keep moving his vehicle. This allows him to protect his gunner from my infantry, which could actually uh, kill him easily if he was in a static position. That uh, shows that the player actually has experience. But that also means that uh, the guy invested a lot of points into his vehicle, and this means that he probably has a hole in his flank. So I used that opportunity to flank a couple of my assault infantry into uh, the rear of his line. This way I can actually scout the enemy position and potentially use uh, my infantry on his rear to attack tank. So that can be a very useful strategy. If you see that somebody has invested a lot, that means he has less infantry cover and you can use that to uh, sneak your uh, very useful anti-tank infantry or assault infantry or anything that can blow up tank into his rear and you keep them stealthy and use them only when the times come but you must be very careful in this case you will see later that uh, I actually misused that opportunity but still it can be very important to take advantage of any hole in the battlefield to sneak valuable anti-tank troops or anything that can be useful to you long term. At this point, having spotted that my enemies had spawned an anti-air vehicle, I had the confidence that I could actually spawn a tank without risking having a bigger tank facing it because my enemies had invested in light vehicles so I spawned my tank to counter-attack him with effect. But even though you have a tank, it's really important to be careful for anti-tank weapons such as uh, any AT cannon. Because uh, now, even if it's a fairly weak anti-tank cannon, it can be very uh, effective against uh, even a medium tank. Because now the game includes APCR rounds and these are very powerful. They are a shorter range than uh, AP round or AV uh, explosive rounds, but uh, they can still really... Uh, inflict heavy uh, damage to your tank and as you can see here that light cannon over there 
actually destroyed my track and is uh, threatening my team, but fortunately I managed to destroy it. Now each time you destroy enemy asset, it's really important to take advantage of it by advancing because in this case the mode is about controlling zones and to make ma the maximum point you really need to advance and hold it. So each time you destroy uh, some hardware they have, it's uh, important to take advantage of it and push the enemy f uh, backward. Menaphora Assault Squad also offer you a kind of uh, trade-off when you buy tank is that you can buy cheaper infantry such as conscript and uh, the interesting aspect of it is that it actually forced you to do the choice between having a good infantry which can push back enemy tank and enemy infantry or you can buy conscript which are only good against enemy infantry they have no anti-tank capacities and that means that uh, by spawning tank you actually won you actually say that you prefer to uh, use conscript to be your eyes and use the tank as your main weapon but that means that if you lose your tank you're in a bad position you may only lose conscript which are fairly cheap but uh, the tank will be your main strategy at the same time if you use heavy infantry that means you will be able to blind the enemy by uh, killing all his infantry and uh, that means that his tank will be much more vulnerable to uh, your uh, advance. So it's really uh, interesting how you can play this game. And actually, I did manage to win a couple of games with just infantry. So uh, it's really well balanced. It, it's much different from the original Man of War in that way. And I think what you, you just saw as I was explaining this is a very good example of that. I lost my tank. No uh, problem, I had some infantry which had anti-tank capacity that blew up his steward and in the end it's my infantry that won that. So my tank was lost but it's fixable and uh, that's much different than what you will see in the original Man of War. And as you can see my enemy answer for his loss is to actually counter-attack with a lot of infantry and his strategy does work once again because now I have less infantry to uh, hold him, so he managed to push me back. So it's really dynamic, because uh, it's really changing and a lot. And it's, there's a lot of intensity, and there's a lot of action, and there's a lot of attack, counter-attack, and it's really uh, fun. Now my answer to his heavy infantry attack was to spawn a, a light vehicle, which probably was a mistake, because my enemy actually was using anti-air weapon, which is something pretty rare. <laughs> but uh, in this case, it really did serve him well. And as you can see, my choice actually led me to use conscript, which managed to hold him, but uh, at the same time, I have a hard time pushing him back. So each time you buy a vehicle, you trade off with infantry and the other way around. So it's really interesting how you need to make tactical choice like that because every choice you make is a sacrifice somewhere else. Now in my case, my conscript actually have anti-infantry capacity because yeah, they have rifles and they have one grenade. So they are a good way to push the enemy back uh, with uh, fairly cheap means because uh, they don't cost much so they are expendable and you can send them throw a grenade and expose them to enemy fire without too much uh, to worry about uh, how much they cost. So it's a good way to actually use anti-infantry weapon such as grenade without having to uh, spend too much on it. And that's about when my uh, teammate decided to go have a social life. But since he was the host and uh, he's actually a good player, decided to make his team benefit from his lead so he gave me all his troop because he trusts me good choice there now his troop that he gave me are on the left flank and uh, i had two choices there i could either leave them there or bring them to my front and uh, in this case i choose to uh, bring them to my front because uh, there was no way I will be able to hold two front especially since uh, the guy on the left flank was actually pretty good uh, apparently because uh, my teammate did not manage to hold his position so that means that I brought his troop to my flank and uh, 
you will see that it was actually very good for me because while it was to the detriment to uh, the old front because now the left flank was unprotected it really did help me to hold two enemies that I was mostly facing at home. Now my teammate gave me a tank and a mechanized infantry which I believe were airborne infantry and uh, I decided to use them in a lazy way, meaning mostly pushing while using the AI capacities and not micromanaging them too much because I'm not a fan of micromanaging personally. I also call it a group of uh, assault grenadiers, which are very heavy infantry, they uh, can take a lot of punishment and they aim very quickly and uh, suppress the enemy a lot, so they are really good to advance. They also have a Panzer Shrek. Opens our foes, I mean. And as you can see, the enemy infantry uh, is very suppressed. They can't even return fire most of the time. And my airborns are pushing them fairly easily without that much casualties. But ultimately, it's clear that my laziness at managing those mechanized infantry uh, may mean their death. And that's okay with me since I did not pay for them. <laughs> But now uh, those troops actually forced my enemy to react by spawning uh, anti-tank weapons and uh, a tank to answer my push and uh, that was uh, the moment where I decided to send my uh, assault infantry maybe too early and uh, maybe uh, too, in too much of an uh, hurry and they got spotted unfortunately by the enemy aftrack and they were killed. So that wasn't too good, but uh, at least you know the potential now that those assault infantry could have. And now that switched the uh, main offensive weapon to uh, that tank that uh, my teammate gave me. And uh, you can see that uh, I actually do a very good use of it, even though I probably could have done better, but uh, it kept the enemy buzzy for a while and uh, allowed me to hold the flag longer without being pushed back. Now I will also point out uh, the use of the terrain I do because I'm in a, like uh, a small depression there and uh, there's uh, a the enemy on my right to fire on me. That's actually very good to keep pressure on because uh, keeping pressure is not only about firing on your enemy or destroying your enemy or kill them. It's about uh, holding him and uh, sometimes not killing him may actually be a good way to hold him because as long as he's buzzy with you, that's good. It's good because your enemy is not spawning anymore and you know where he is and you know that he's buzzy with you. So you really don't need him to advance, kill you or kill him. As long as he's there, he's not achieving his objective. So you just hold him. Now as you can see, in this case, I'm actually uh, very well holding my position and I'm even pushing them back to their spawn and in this game it's actually uh, quite an achievement because uh, we are outnumbered we are by one player and that's not the kind of game where being outnumbered is a good thing because you will get out at some point unless your enemies are very bad this is why uh, there's a kind of uh, etiquette when you play this game is that you should not leave even if you're losing badly because if you do so you actually penalize the whole team and it's not like a first person shooter when you can do without one more player in this game if you leave you're actually backstabbing your team so even if you get owned stay in there and fight to the death because if you don't everybody will hate you your team will hate you because you desert him and the enemies will hate you because you are preventing them to have free praise. And one you can see here is actually me pushing my luck further because <laughs> I'm actually trying to capture the flag at the closest to the enemy spawn and uh, with a few infantry. Of course, I lose them. It probably wasn't too smart of me, but uh, I like to push my luck. That's uh, what is fun in most games. And that's also something which is uh, much different from the original metaphor is that now you can actually enjoy pushing your luck and taking risks which will turn uh, into a bloodbath 
uh, because uh, unlike in the original Man of War where you uh, were actually uh, extremely frustrated each time you lost anything, in this game you really don't feel frustrated anymore, it's just part of the game. It's okay to lose stuff, they don't matter as much as before and uh, it's much more fun uh, and enjoyable. And you can see here that actually uh, static movable but static anti-tank cannon is actually destroying mag tank and uh, I really don't mind it. <laughs> Especially since a Sherman finally got the final shot on my tank. And actually the fact that I lost my tank allowed me to spawn a tiger. So <laughs> that's like a good trade-off. And by the way that's also something different from the original Man of War. And the original Tiger were very cheap, but now they are much more expensive. Not that as expensive as it could be, but still expensive stuff. And it's really rare that you will see a King Tiger. I think I only saw a King Tiger two times so far in many games. And also in the original Metaphor, most people just skipped over the Tiger. So everybody waited for the King Tiger. And now the Tiger is much more uh, an option when you want a good tank, heavy tank, and uh, it's much more present in the battlefield. But of course this goes with the counterbalance from the American, which have much better Sherman, and uh, they also have a different skin from Men of War, and same with the Tiger, they look much better and more, much more believable. But you also need to keep in mind the APCR rounds, which make uh, it much easier to destroy if your tank. So you really need to use it carefully. And the main advantage of it is that actually it's, it has a really long range. So uh, uh, to destroy anti-tank weapon, it's really good. And uh, you can stay out of uh, their uh, piercing power range and uh, you can blow them up. So that's very effective. But at the same time, uh, be aware of any flanking maneuver from the enemies because the Tiger is fairly slow. And you can flank it uh, fairly easily with uh, a good Sherman. And that's what I was worried about uh, with that ground on my left flank uh, because the enemies were pushing hard on the center. And uh, that ground, I don't know if it has the capacity to destroy a Tiger, but uh, with APCR around, I would not be surprised to. And after a couple of shots, my Tiger finally managed to play this engine. So I was uh, very happy about that, even if uh, it's a small wiggle, it's useful to get rid of it. And that did support my team ultimately. But at this point I turned my attention back to uh, the enemy cannon. Because uh, it's clear that if you c kill the crew, uh, it's disabled, but you should always make sure to destroy the enemy pieces so they don't come back so or they don't get fixed and uh, you can lose many tank if you don't do so because uh, enemies are can be very sneaky you also need to get rid of uh, anti-air weapon which are very good against infantry and uh, because your infantry are really your eyes in this game you really need them to uh, watch all around your tank because you may have the best tank ever but uh, if it's fine it's useless and without infantry, I'm pretty sure I will know to have spotted that counter-attack by the enemy, which I actually tried to flank my Tiger in a very uh, traditional way. And this is where my uh, Tiger proved his work against those two Sherman and blew them up. But I uh, actually waited a little. I got my turret blue now. That's where uh, direct control is actually very useful. For those who are not aware of it, you can actually direct control your troops, uh, even the small infantry guy. So what you do is simply hold the control key in my case, then uh, you uh, just aim with uh, the mouse where you want to your unit fire and you can move it with uh, the arrows or the WAC, depending how you configure your controls. And uh, you, with direct control, if your turret is destroyed, you can uh, just turn your tank like a static gun and uh, align to your target. Fortunately, in this case, my cannon wasn't destroyed, so I could still destroy the Sherman, which I did. 
But of course, before being able to do so, I had to use a Panzer IV as a decoy, but uh, that may be a little expensive decoy. Uh, I wasn't intended that much. I was expecting it to destroy the enemy Sherman, but that did not happen, unfortunately. So having no other choice, I didn't control my Tiger and I return fire on it. The Sherman being very close, uh, if I hit it, was clearly a kill. And the enemy probably wasn't using APCR rounds for some reason. And uh, his uh, AP uh, rounds only bounced on my Tiger armor. And uh, this is also one thing which is really cool about this game is that uh, your tank may be under fire all day long against uh, weaker enemy can. And uh, he doesn't care that much since his armor block everything, which is uh, under. Uh, who doesn't have the armor piercing power sufficient to pierce thick armor. So that's a really realistic aspect of uh, tank of this game. And that's something you won't see in most game. Some game you will only see that uh, if you fire on the rear armor of a tank, you do more damage. But in this game, every single part of the tank has specific uh, armor thickness. And that means you need a sufficient armor piercing power uh, to blow uh, it up. And that means that you can blow it up in one shot as well as ten shot, depending where you aim. And uh, every single part of the Tiger or any other vehicle can be uh, individually damaged. And that's really something which is cool in this game. Because uh, that means you can, uh, for example, throw a simple cocktail Molotov on the engine and it will cut in fire. And uh, it will uh, ultimately explode. And that means you can actually destroy a tank with very low tech. And uh, I think that's really one thing which is great in this game. But also that means that you need to be aware of enemy caliber. And uh, that means that uh, if you see a tank destroyer, you should be careful about it. And in this case, uh, the enemy uh, is a slugger, which actually uh, have a very good caliber and is uh, really a threat to my tiger. And ultimately it will blow up my tiger, unfortunately. And actually it will blow up two of my tiger. I'm, sp I'm spoiling the action here already, but uh, yeah, that, uh, that thing is really dangerous. Even uh, against the frontal armor of my tiger, it has the capacity to pierce the armor. And that's because it has a very high caliber cannon. I think that's probably where in this game, uh, the, the fact that we are uh, three against four is starting to uh, have an effect because the enemies are starting to use artillery and heavy stuff and that means that uh, the rest of the front did not commit sufficient number of uh, resources to keep the enemy busy on bigger stuff and that allow your enemies to spawn bigger stuff and out uh, gun you and uh, I think that's probably uh, starting to show there because I'm getting uh, uh, it by artillery shells and uh, the enemy have sluggers which are pretty good tank and also bust it up and uh, it's clear that from this point uh, it will be hard to push them back but uh, I think uh, it was still a good fight until the end and I think it's mostly due to the fact that as you will see I'm changing my strategy since every tank no longer work in those conditions because the enemy outnumber you. Uh, I'm starting to uh, rely more on my infantry and I'll push them back using my infantry, elite infantry with anti-tank capacities and I am actually managed to push them back to at least the flag and uh, all that because this game allow you to use infantry effectively. <laughs> and uh, it's no longer just a bunch of scouts, as I said before. They really are effective against enemy infantry as well as enemy tank. And uh, you really can do a good job with proper use of infantry now. And that will show. Now, of course, I should share the merit with uh, the guy in the center and the guy on my left. 
which actually did manage to hold themselves very well, even though they were probably in worse condition than me in terms of number. But uh, I think uh, probably um, even though we lost, uh, we w I think my team really did a good job globally. And uh, the enemy team also did a good job. It was a very good match globally. And both sides were very good. And uh, both sides had player with experience. And everybody knew what, what he was doing on each side. And uh, yeah, it was a good game. Really good game. Now, of course, uh, I kept trying to push them back with my infantry, but uh, sometimes luck is no longer on your side, so uh, I had a hard time, and uh, my Panzer Grenadier actually fired a couple of Panzer foes uh, at an enemy uh, Sherman without much success. We mostly missed and did minor damage, so that wasn't too impressive, and uh, I actually lost a couple of them without uh, being of too much effect, but still uh, I kept uh, trying to push them back I think it's what mattered uh, from there it was clear that uh, there was no way we could uh, turn the front and uh, it was clear that we were about to lose and yet that was a very good game and I'm very uh, satisfied by it I think this video is a good representation of uh, the potential in terms of fun you can have in uh, for our assault squad and I think uh, another aspect also if you notice the action kept going it was intense all along and uh, there was no uh, quiet moment and uh, both sides were keep trying to capture the zone and add the resources necessary to do so and that was really uh, a continuous battle non-stop and uh, even though uh, it's clear that we lost now, uh, we were still able to put up a fight, which wasn't the case back in the uh, of War original, where you probably will have run out of resources already, and uh, you you probably will have leave the game already, because you will be frustrated from everything you lost. So the I think this game really does change the mindset of uh, the Men of War players and uh, it's much more enjoyable and by the way there's an open beta if you want to uh, try it out I think it's a game that's really worth trying and uh, if you play it Men of War you will see that it's much different and if you did not play Men of War I think that's the kind of game that you need to discover and it's much better in my opinion than uh, most game of that type and I think it's really a game that uh, is worth exploring and understanding how it works, give it the time, because in the beginning you will have a hard time, especially if you play against experienced player, where you probably won't last long. But uh, as you will learn, you will see that this game is really amazing. So try it out, and uh, keep your eyes open for more videos of that kind.